Hello and welcome to this knowledge sharing series. I'm Tarun Mahajan, a chartered accountant and more a registered valuer. I'm doing valuation assignments across India for securities or financial assets. When it comes to valuation, it interests me a lot. And here I am trying to share my knowledge about valuation opportunities under the Income Tax Act 1961. The purpose of this session is not to give any legal advice to anybody. The purpose is just to share my knowledge with all my professional colleagues. If I'm wrong somewhere or if you also have a point to discuss, you can see my email ID and my WhatsApp ID on the screen. Please feel free to discuss any matters related to this topic with me through these communication modes. So recently, Ministry of Finance, Department of Revenue, Central Board of Direct Taxes has issued a notification dated 25th of September 2023, which actually replaces sub rule number 2 of rule number 11 of the income tax rules. 1962 and this sub rule actually in fact this whole rule actually talks about valuation valuation under the income tax act 1961 after this amendment chartered accountants lost one opportunity of valuation that is valuation of compulsorily convertible preference shares by a company for the purpose of raising funds. Now look at this. Let's do a plain reading of section number 56. What does it say? And then we will talk about the rule part also. Section number 56, subsection 2, clause 7b says that where a company not being a company in which public are substantially interested receives in any previous year from a person being a resident, this being a resident has been eliminated from 1st of April 2024. That is assessment year 24-25. Any consideration for issue of shares. It doesn't say issue of equity shares. It doesn't say issue of preference shares. It says issue of shares. That means it includes both issue of equity shares and issue of preference shares. So there will be a need of valuation of equity share. And there will be a need of valuation of preference shares, especially if those preference shares are convertible, right? Compulsorily convertible preference shares or optionally convertible preference shares. Now, coming to rule number 11 UA, which is the relevant rule for this section. Rule number 11 UA, sub rule number 1, clause C. This is about valuation of shares and securities. This clause is not only supporting section number 56.27b, but also it is supporting section number 50ca from the point of view of transfer of the share. And this rule is also for the purpose of section number 56.210, that is from the purpose of transfer or buyer of the shares or other securities that's why this is shares and other securities for 56 to 7b shares is relevant but for 56 to 10 recipient of securities the security word is also important so here subclause a is about quoted shares 
of clause number C. Subclause B is about unquoted equity shares. And subclause C is about unquoted shares as well as securities other than equity shares. So let's read this rule number 11 UA 1 C C clause C sub clause C which is helpful, which is useful, which is supporting section 56 to 7B allotment of securities that is allotment of shares I'm sorry as well as 50 CA transfer of shares as well as 56 to 10 for recipient of any shares or securities. It is for all those three sections. Now look at this. It says that the fair market value of unquoted shares and securities other than equity shares. So this subclause is applicable to CCPS, OCPS, compulsorily convertible preference shares, optionally convertible preference shares. CCD compulsorily convertible debentures at least for the purpose of 56 to 10. OCD optionally convertible debentures because those are also securities and there may be many other types of securities. In a company which are not listed on any recognized stock exchange. So obviously we are talking about unlisted companies. Shall be estimated to be price it would fetch if sold in the open market on the valuation date, that is fair value of those shares or securities. And the assessee may obtain a report. Okay, so there is a work opportunity to issue a valuation report from whom? From a merchant banker or an accountant. When we say accountant, you know it very well, it means a chartered accountant in respect of such valuations. So there was opportunity to do the valuation work by the chartered accountants. If a company is going to allot compulsorily convertible preference shares or optionally convertible preference shares. But now there is an amendment in sub rule number two. What does sub rule two says? The previous version before amendment version. Notwithstanding anything contained in subclause B or subclause C, subclause B is for valuation of equity shares and subclause C is for valuation of shares other than equity shares, that is preference shares and other securities. So when it comes to 56 to 7b, we don't apply sub <coughs> rule number one. We sub rule number one, we actually apply sub rule number two. And sub rule number two actually gives you two choices. So in nutshell, when a company is going to issue a lot, any shares, in that case, 56 to 7b is applicable. And for that, we follow sub rule number two. Now, sub rule number two was saying fair market value of unquoted equity shares. Unquoted equity shares. So this was giving an exception for equity shares and it was not giving any exception for preference shares. And for equity shares, you know it very well. There were only two choices. One was the book value method. And other was the discounted cash flow method, which can be certified only by a merchant banker. Earlier, there was an opportunity for chartered accountants also. But several years back, government removed accountant word from over here. So we have already lost this opportunity of valuation work several years back. And now this sub rule 2 was only for unquoted equity shares. It was not talking about preference shares. And when we see, look here at the preference shares part, even a chartered accountant was having the valuation work opportunity. Now coming to the amendment part. 
amendment part it says that this uh, rule 2 of rule number 11 ua is replaced with effect from 25th of september 2023 and it says that notwithstanding anything contained in subclause b that is about the equity shares or subclause C that is about the preference shares and other securities. But for 56.27B, other securities are not relevant, only preference shares are relevant. The fair market value of unquoted equity shares is this clause A of newly introduced sub rule 2. And look here, this is clause B of the newly introduced sub rule 2 the fair market value of compulsorily convertible preference shares for the purpose of sub clause 1 of clause a of explanation to clause 7 b of subsection 2 of section 56 now what does it say it is giving five types of valuation methods so the first valuation method which is discussed over here above the first valuation method is again the same the book value method so book value method does not require certification by anybody so anybody can certify it including a chartered accountant okay give me a moment clause b is the discounted cash flow method of the valuation for CCPS, which can be done only by a merchant banker. Clause C says that there is no need of valuation. You recently had a transaction with venture capital, etc. So you take it as the fair value. And then clause D is the, again the valuation using the various other methods other than the discounted cash flow method. And again, here this can be done only by a merchant banker. So, what is the conclusion over here that actually as a chartered accountant, now we cannot do valuation of compulsorily convertible preference shares to be allotted by a company, which earlier we were able to do due to rule number 11 UA 1 CC. This is one opportunity which is lost and now there is one more thing which we have already lost lost i'm sorry uh when the finance act uh, 2023 came into role look here section 56 7 b it says that if you have raised money from any person being a resident what does it mean that earlier if a company was making allotment of its equity shares or preference shares to a non-resident Section 56.27b was not required. It means valuation of those equity shares or preference share was not required. But now look at this. I click here and you can see that it says that these italic words shall be omitted by the Finance Act 2023 with effect from 1st of April 2024. That is assessment year 24-25. That is the financial year 23-24. Being a resident words will be actually ignored. And what does it mean? It simply means that even if there is an allotment of shares to a non-resident, say for indirect investment, in that case also, you need a company needs a valuation report. Now, let me tell you that these allotments are usually made at a premium. So, the only way to arrive at a fair value, considerably higher fair value, is using the discounted cash flow method, which can be performed only by a merchant banker. So, even for this FDI, under the Income Tax Act, valuation will be done by a merchant banker. So if there is a foreign direct investment into an Indian company, that Indian company will be required to get done the valuation under the Income Tax Act. And the only person who is eligible to do the DCF valuation under Income Tax Act 
is a merchant banker. Now it comes to FEMA. Under FEMA, still a merchant banker, a cost accountant, and a chartered accountant can do the valuation for foreign direct investment into Indian company. But if I am a company and under the income tax act, I am required to take a valuation certificate from a merchant banker, why should I go to a chartered accountant separately for a certification under the FEMA? I will definitely take merchant banker certification not only under the income tax act, but also under the foreign exchange management act, which is very rational, logical from the company's point of view. So chartered accountants even lost this opportunity of valuation work. If you have any other opinion on this, or you would like to contribute anything else on this, just feel free to connect to me at my email ID or at my mobile number or being the professional colleague, my professional brothers and sisters. If you have any queries related to the valuation work under the Companies Act, under the Foreign Exchange Management Act, under IPC, under Income Tax Act, or maybe for family dispute or anything, if you're stuck somewhere and you just need to cross check what exactly you are doing, then I'll be happy to help you just like your brother, your sister. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll continue this knowledge series. Thanks a lot.